Hello everyone and welcome back to Getting Organized with Google. Today we're going to be looking at Google Classroom and specifically how we can better organize the content within the course. I have three simple tips that I'm going to share with you that hopefully you'll find uh, beneficial. First, this is a very basic one, but super important. It is vital that you name your class effectively. Now you can see my Google Classroom courses here. And what you want to make sure is that you're not calling your courses simple things just like math or you know history or world literature. The problem is that you teach the same course every year. And over time, once you teach a course two, three times, it's going to become quite confusing to try to figure out when you're reusing assignments which course you posted something in. So take a look at your course cards. And I recommend anytime you're creating a class that you um, include the name of the course and the semester or the year. So you might do like here, I can change this to a biology uh, semester one, uh, 17, 18, something like that. Um, this second field here is revert, reserved for sections. So if you teach multiple sections of biology, you would do like first period, um, something like that. It's not a, a huge thing. You can rename your course. It really doesn't make a difference to your students. They're going to just be a member of the course regardless of what it's called. But this is really for you. So take a look at your course name and make sure that it has the date in there so that you can easily identify it in the future. To do that, again, you're just going to go to your course card, click on the snowman, the three dots in the corner, and select edit. So that's tip number one. Let's go inside of a course. And I'm going to show you a second tip. Now, something a little bit embarrassing about Google Classroom, um, it does not have a search feature, which is a bit embarrassing considering Google is the most popular and powerful search company in the world, but there's no search. And by this time in the school year, end of the year, your class is probably filled with content. And if a student is trying to find something, it's going to be very difficult for them to find what they need because they just have to keep scrolling uh, to look for it. We don't have search, but we do have topics over here on the left side. You'll see this block and these are topics that allow you to tag questions, assignments and resources into a category. Now, in most cases, the, the most logical thing to do is to create a topic for each unit in your course. Um, that way, if a kid is looking for a unit, uh, you know, a resource on unit one, which was on cells, they can just click that and all of those units will appear. So if I click, only shows me the science related topics in this case. If you're an elementary teacher, you may choose to create topics kind of like I have here and do one for each subject area. So students can say, oh, I need a math resource. They click math and that appears. It's totally up to you. Um, you just want to make sure that you don't create too many topics. Otherwise, it becomes um, overwhelming itself. You also probably want to create some kind of a resource, announcement, topic that you can kind of stick random odds and ends into as well. So that's tip number two, uh, work with your topics. Um, there's a bonus one I want to share with you here. You can kind of see that I have little pictures with my topics. Um, I am using uh, an emoji extension for Google Chrome to add relevant picture icons to my topics just makes it a little bit easier to identify and makes Google Classroom a little more visually appearing appealing. So I have um, one called emoji keyboard. I'll link to that in the um, notes for this video that you can download and just copy and paste that emoji right into the topic. So that's uh, tip number two, organize with topics. Now the third tip is um, probably the most important and one of the most overlooked um, tips. So I'm going to go in and look at an assignment here. Let's go down. Uh, here we go. Okay. So this assignment here was a question. You can see I had 24 students, um, who completed it, but then I returned those files. It's very important that you are returning student work. This is going to be really important when you think about Google Drive. So let me explain how this works. When you assign a file to a student um, using the 
make a copy option. So this is a good example right here. Every student has their own copy of this file. When I click assign, that copy gets made and placed in the student's Google Drive account. They are the owner of that file. When they turn that file in to me, they submit it, that ownership is transferred back to me and I become the owner. That's very helpful because it prevents students from editing things once they've turned it in. If you grade and provide feedback to students, but you don't return the file, the problem is that file stays in your Google Drive account. And so when you go to Drive and you search for things, you are going to see all of those files. Over time, the course of an entire year or several years, this can really lead to hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of files that you don't need anymore. So what you wanna do is you wanna open that assignment up and typically I just click on the done column and then I select the return button. That transfers ownership back to uh, the student so that the file is in their Google Drive account. Now at the end of the year, it can be kind of tricky to figure out which assignments are and are not returned. So what I like to do is use the tool um, in Classroom. So I'm gonna click on the hamburger in the top left corner and scroll down to this option here which says to do. This is going to show me all of my assignments and all of or all my classes and all the assignments in those classes. I like to just look at one course at a time. So I'll use the uh, the drop down here to select just my course and then it will show me a summary of all of my assignments. And this makes it really easy for me to identify any assignments um, that have not yet been returned. So I can see how many are done, not done, and in this case, those have yet to be returned. So I would need to click on that and go and return those assignments. So typically what I do is at the end of the year, once all student work has been turned in and graded, I'll go through this, look for any assignments that need return. Those are some late assignments that were submitted. Return those prior to archiving my course for the end of the year. So again, we're looking at this um, to-do list and then sorting our list by class. And we're looking in this column. Um, so this example here is a good one at the bottom. So I can see I have five assignments that are not done. I really am looking for this one here where it says assignments that are done but not yet returned and I don't have any, so that would be fine. So that's the third tip is just returning that work. Once you've done that for the year, the final step that uh, you would do is you would return to your home screen, click on the three dots for each of your courses and select the archive button. That will make your course read only. Students can still access their work, but they won't be able to turn anything in, continue chatting with friends, um, it kind of freezes everything in place. You do that once everything's buttoned up, all the grades are in, all the assignments have been returned. So there's three tips for organizing Google Classroom. Uh, look at your name. Uh, Make sure you have good topics and then returning student work prior to archiving.